Hey there, this is State of the Union on Liberty Television with Mariam Zakari. Today we're going to take a look at the recent happenings in the country. At the onset, onset of the month of October, many Nigerians took to the streets demanding the scrapping of the special anti-robbery squad SARS and units of the Nigeria Police Force. Despite the scrapping of the units by the Inspector General of Police, Adamu Mohammed. The protesters stayed on the streets, citing similar pronouncements, scrapping of SARS, which were made in the past but came to nothing. Things, however, took a dangerous dimension on Tuesday last week when armed soldiers opened fire on the protesters in the Lekki area of Lagos State. The shooting, witnesses say, resulted in the death of scores of persons, but the Nigerian army later denied responsibility for the incident. Human rights organization Amnesty International, however, put the casualty figure from the incident and another one at Ikeja at 12. Now that, the development, that development triggered a wave of attacks on public infrastructure, security personnel, and a looting spree in many parts of the country, particularly in Lagos State. This will form part of our topic of discussion today as we look at what lies ahead in the coming days. But before I introduce my guests, let's quickly look at some trending news items. The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has ordered the immediate mobilization of all police operational assets and resources to bring an end to the wanton violence, killings, looting and destruction of public and private property in the country. He gave the order to all Assistant Inspector General of Police Commissioners of police, heads of police, operational units, squadron and base commanders in charge of zonal state FCT commands, the police mobile force, counter-terrorism units, and the special protect, protection units. The force public relations officer Frank Mba disclosed this in a statement in Abuja, the nation's capital. Adamo ordered the senior police officers to reclaim the public space from criminal elements masquerading as protesters in some parts of the country. He specifically ordered the commissioners of police and heads of police formations in the various states to mobilize their men and work in sync with the command CPS in the areas where they were domiciled to dominate the public space and ensure peace and safety in the affected areas. Still in the news, some Kaduna residents have attacked the Office of the National Agency for Food Drug Administration and Control, NAFTA, cutting away seized fake and expired drugs and beverages. The affected offices include the NAFTA warehouse belonging to the Investigation and Enforcement Directorate, as well as the Training and Research Institute for the Northern Region and Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. The drugs were seized from illicit drug dealers and meant for destruction. Meanwhile, the Kaduna state government has warned on health risk from drugs and beverages looted from NAVDAC office and other warehouses in the state capital. And finally, we would like to let you know that the National Examinations Council, NECO, has postponed the ongoing nationwide senior secondary school, senior secondary certificate examinations indefinitely due to the current security challenges occasioned by the NSARS protests. This was contained in a statement signed by the Head of Information and Public Relations Division, Neko Aziz Sani, and made available to newsmen in Mina on Sunday. Sani said the NSARS protests disrupted the smooth conduct of the examinations in some parts of the country. He said the governing board further resolved that when normalcy returns, the council will continue with the conduct of the examinations in all states. Now, these are the news uh, trending as at this afternoon around the country. I have with me in the studio today a uh, convener of Joint Action Committee of Northern Youth Associations, Murtala Abubakar. You're welcome. Mariam, thank you for having me. I'm good evening, listener and viewers. All right. So, well, happenings uh, within the country, across the country, initially started as uh, a protest. NSAS protest, and then we had the pro SARS protest, and then you know, uh, day before yesterday, yesterday it took another dimension. Uh, we have we've had uh, hoodlums 
or people breaking into warehouses, breaking into people's houses, cutting away goods, uh, burning uh, items and all of that. And people are beginning to express concern that this could lead to probably a revolution, if not, um, uh, if, if we're not careful. What do you think about everything that is unfolding right now? Well, uh, like I, my take on this is that what we are seeing actually are simply a manifestation of a deep problem. And then the problem, the, the underlying factors are issue of unemployment, issue of poverty, issue of insecurity, and ungoverned space, and even lack of uh, governance. So the fallout of uh, this long criminal neglect of, of uh, authority refusing to do what the, uh, they need to do in order to make life easier, comfortable for the citizen is the reaction that we are seeing. However, we, you can see it's taking dimension gradually. It started with uh, what they call NSAS protests. Yeah. And uh, then we expected, even from the very commencement of this protest, mm. we knew if if, 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 if from, the, from the procedure or the way the protestant handled, uh, are handling it, we know it's going to end this way. There's no way in the world that you have people who will come out to protest and they're even giving, uh, I mean, demand without having people that are leading the, 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 the protest. For instance, when you ask the protester, who are your leadership so that they, they can engage with other relevant uh, stakeholders in order to, have, to, to find an amicable way of resolving or even help in, uh, in, in meeting to their demand. They will tell you they have no leader. And then anywhere that you have collection of people, group of people, and there's nobody who will give an instruction, do this, don't do this, let's wait here, let's move here, then the, 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 the end result is going to be uh, chaos. And then this is gradually what we are seeing. But However, from, the authority but, too, yeah. we expected immediately when this thing started. Mm. Because uh, like NSAS uh, saga, it's not, this is not the first time that Nigeria are coming out in numbers to say that uh, the arbitrariness and the brutality of this uh, police tactical command is inhuman, is, is, is inhuman and then is detrimental and is, uh, to the peace and security of Nigeria. The, uh, the, you remember when President Buhari was in, away in UK during one of his uh, medical, medical trips, when uh, Professor Yomi was acting president, he came out to tell Nigeria that this very tactical command has been disbanded. And to behold, later on we saw them uh, happening, doing the we same thing, even with, yeah, even with a more, uh, they are doing it even with more audacity, and which uh, actually provokes Nigeria to come out and begin to end it. But again, we see how the government also reacted. They met to their demand. So what, what one would have expected was to see, okay, you have... Uh, Did the government actually meet their demands? Uh, the argument is this. Mm -hmm. Yes, they presented their demands. Yeah. And uh, some people actually said they should have waited to see what the government was going to do. Having uh, presented their demands, they should have waited. But again, on the part of the protesters, I mean, uh, to be fair to them, the first 10 days, mm. we had peaceful protests. No destruction where people were even cleaning up after themselves. Uh, after littering the street, before they leave the street, you know, they clean up and all of that. Until, well, some people said there was a kind of infiltration by hoodlums uh, who hijacked this process. And then it became violent where uh, people were being attacked. For example, here in Apple, cars were burnt. Uh, people were injured, some killed or even maimed. Now... You are talking about uh, they have presented their, their uh, request and mm -hmm. the government is looking into it. And the argument is this, like you mentioned also when, while you were uh, talking. This is not the first time. I mean, when uh, Vice President uh, was 
I, I remember, yeah. if, yes, when he was acting a few uh, months or more than a year ago, the name was, there was a kind of rebranding actually from SARS to FSARS, but that did not Federal change. SARS. Yes, to mm -hmm. FSARS, but mm -hmm. that did not change anything. It didn't deter them. It was just the name change. And for these protesters, to be fair to them, one would say that, okay, yes, it is not just scrapping. That has been done before. So what is going to be different? I guess that was the motivation for continued I protests. agree that there is a lot of, uh, loss of confidence in government. And then that is why I cited the example. Because this particular one is not the first time mm. that this thing is uh, happening. And this kind of demand is uh, coming from the, from the public. However, when you are organizing protests of this nature, you must know that uh, there are rules of engagement. There are certain minimum uh, requirements that is expected of whoever are organizing this to ensure that there is no infiltration and the protests, peacefully in court, do not degenerate into is it violence. Possible? Is it possible? Something that you know, was done in open space, is it possible to actually check? It's possible. How? Fine. You see, we during our school days and even up to this moment, even last week, we organized a protest. And when you are organizing protests of this, you make sure that all the branches, all the organizations that are coming to participate are well, uh, how would I call it, profiled. And you tell them exactly because they must be aware of what you are even going out to demand and they must key into the, 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 the the, the grievances. Isn't so, that what they were doing? Uh, I mean, the NSAS protesters. That was not what they did. And that is why I'm telling you that from the onset, the way they organized it, without leadership, without proper coordination, the, 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 the anticipation or the tendency that is going to generate is high. And that was what actually happened. So you can't bring hundreds of people and you don't even have, a, at least when the government, despite the, uh, the, 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 the mistrust, when the government said, okay, they are going to look into this, what you should have, they should have done was to appoint or select some uh, leaders among them to say, okay, we agree, but this is the framework that we want to engage government on so that we can ensure that this time around is not the usual uh, promise that will never come to see the light of the, the day. So allowing this thing to continue beyond even up to 10 days, so it definitely you know you cannot control it anymore. And this is the result we are seeing today. Well, we all know that um, what is happening right now is a kind of a trust deficit yeah. between government and, and the, citizens. the citizens. Shouldn't that be where the government should be focusing right now? Because there seems to be like, uh, you know, lack of trust between the government and the people. Yeah, you see, one of the major problems of this government is this trust deficit. The government is not carrying Nigeria along. And you can see, even when this crisis was uh, unfolding, the government official, officials, and even federal government in particular, supposed to have reached out to other interest groups, I mean critical stakeholders, to see how this thing can be looked holistically and then bring an end to this uh, recurring process. But you see, there were just other ones that sat in the villa or in the comfort of their offices, looking, allowing things to get degenerated, to the point that all of us today are trying to, you know, are just running from um, pillar to this thing to find a solution to it. If from the onset, the government was tactical enough to reach out, to engage, and also win confidence of the citizens, all these things would, that we are seeing today wouldn't have occurred. Another worrisome dimension, uh, which started about two days ago, or less than 48 hours uh, ago, is people breaking into warehouses where COVID-19 palliatives were said to uh, have been kept. Even this afternoon, as we speak, uh, I think about just 30 minutes ago, just around us here in Jabi, uh, some people broke into a warehouse suspected to uh, house COVID-19 palliatives. I think that again is something uh, worrisome. Why would, you know, why should we still have or should there be uh, warehouses where we have 
COVID-19 palliatives, which were supposed to be distributed to the people? Well, this, I think, is really uh, disheartening. In the face of hunger in the land, desperation, despondency, and even people living in squalor, for a government that came under a mantra of change, that they are going to turn things around, people are going to, you know, benefit. And then for that government to allow her citizens to be living in this kind of desperate situation, I think it's not only heartless, but it's the height of insensitivity. And then I, I, for any state government where these kind of um, palliative foods are kept, even beyond reasonable time, because there is no basis that somebody who will contribute like the corporate social responsibility by the corporate bodies who put up this uh, uh, palliative uh, uh, food together, if they can find it difficult in doing so, I don't see what is difficult in distributing this palliative. So uh, to me, this also shows how uncaring, how insensitive, and then how the, uh, the people in position of authority today don't take life of ordinary Nigeria to account in whatever thing they are doing. And it's very, very unfortunate. And you can see from the way people are moving into all these uh, warehouses looking for it, it will tell you the level of desperation in the land. There is no food, the food is so expensive, and our borders are closed, and people cannot go to farm because of insecurity. Once you, especially in northern Nigeria, you can't move, like in Kaduna, for instance, five kilometers outside the uh, capital city without being kidnapped and things like that. And government is not addressing that. And the border are closed, and food, the, the, the price of food is skyrocketing by the day. And what do you expect people to do? And this is actually the manifestation of the, that that we are seeing. People are becoming so desperate, they are looking for all kinds of foods to eat, to the extent that people are even going into federal government uh, uh, reserve, uh, uh, federal minister of agriculture, uh, cultural uh, seed reserve, and taking it away to go and eat. And government are now warning that those things are chemicalized, that if care is not taken, it's going to lead to death. poisoning and mass mm -hmm. death. So I hope those people who have gone to take this kind of uh, food from those reserves should hear what the government are saying and return it so that they don't end up losing their life, unfortunately. You know, unfortunately, uh, the, the country, and not just Nigeria, the world over, uh, people are just recovering from COVID-19. Uh, a lot of businesses are yet to bounce back. Uh, some people have lost their jobs. So one would understand, you know, the reason behind what is going on at the moment. And let's not forget, I mean, this also is affecting even education, which is the bedrock uh, right. of the foundation of any uh, economy. As we speak, NECO, as of today, the, the press release that was sent out to uh, newsmen, NECO uh, has postponed NEC, uh, examinations for senior secondary school uh, certificate until further notice. Now, the reason they gave is, you know, this, uh, uh, the protest, you know, uh, that is going on in several cities. Now, we can see that this protest did not just bring, it, it is not just affecting us economically, it is also going to affect us uh, when it comes uh, in terms of education because now students would have to stay at home until uh, whenever things get back to normal. So, you see, even all these things, just like I said, they are just actually not the, not, 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 not the issue. For instance, if uh, somebody is organizing protests, you know it's your right to protest, I agree. But you must know that your right ends where another person's right begins. So people who are going into their normal businesses like, uh, like uh, schools, uh, uh, our young people who are writing uh, senior secondary school exams, for instance, there's no basis for them to stop them from going to do so because that depends that is what will determine their future and even the future of nigeria so and uh, once the whoever is behind all these protests did not take all these things into account and are doing all these things you can see it's not only affecting the education just like you say there was even a deliberate effort to undermine the 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 the, 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 the authority of the state 
and the, in, in doing so to even undermine the economy. So because by attacking, for instance, the Nation, uh, Nigeria Port Authority and other federal government institutions, what, 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 what do they stand to gain by doing all those things? It's our money. So after burning it, it's still going to be the money, our money that is going to be used to rehabilitate them. So I think uh, there was no uh, good thinking in doing all these things. And uh, this also to show that there is a confusion generally in the land. Not, with the, not even from the government is not really organized. If they are organized enough, there is no way that, that this uh, protest can affect even the conduct of the examinations, for instance. The examination can be organized in such a way that the protest, protest cannot affect it because even the protest is no longer happening. So what, you are hap what is happening now is more or less of a riot by some hoodlums who are taking advantage of uh, the space created by withdrawal of the police that all of us came out to say that they are ineffective. And today we are seeing the impact of that. So we know the, the police have a lot of problems, but putting them under the kind of, or subjugating them under the kind of uh, humiliation that we did to them, I think it's also not helping matter. You can see when you have problems, you call them, they will not come. And are we going to live like that without uh, law and order? So this is part of the fallout of this uh, thing that we did to ourselves that everybody to the is, 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 is finding a way out of it. Well, the program is still state of the union. We'll take a short break now. When we return, there are other issues uh, to talk about. Stay with us. We'll be right back in just a moment. program is still states of the union and today we're looking at the looting spree across the nation we were talking before uh, we went on that break and um, well I think 
one thing that should be done quickly, I, I personally think that uh, gov the government must find a way of restoring that lost confidence between uh, themselves and the governed. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, and this is an opportune moment for government to seize because the, there is lesson in what has happened or is, that is currently happening. And the, the government need to know or what the government need to do urgently is to try to win back the confidence mm -hmm. of Nigerians, which is completely eroded. So, and then secondly, the government must equally recognize that uh, in dealing with such a serious uh, security issue, there is need for collaborations, there is need to reach out, there is need to consultations. So, and I was surprised that throughout the period, one would have expected that uh, the presidency, when this thing was happening, uh, meeting with traditional institutions, uh, meeting with political parties in particular, a uh, meeting with youth group, they are meeting with women group, they are meeting with a lot of all this uh, broader spectrum of the society. But the government felt that it's something they on their own can do. And but I think such I'll meetings uh, have been holding uh, behind closed doors. No, we have seen. there is no, no basis. No, let me tell you, there's yeah. no basis for such meeting to hold be uh, uh, behind closed doors. The only meeting that I held, which was supposed to even have hap ha had happened before it, it took place, was the meeting with the former head of state. So these are things that need to be done frequently. So but you see, this is government that felt they have monopoly of wisdom. They don't need anybody's... Uh, contribution and uh, anything you know they like they will just uh, do and continuously what we are experiencing is this lack of result so if you are doing something that is not giving you the desire you know uh, outcome what you're supposed to do is change that tactic and democracy is about people it's about consultations so and then uh, this is one very vital uh, uh, area that this government is not focusing on and secondly for instance I don't see how a, a whole government will be defeated with propaganda. If you see what play out was more or less a social media war that, uh, that, that took place between the government and the protestant. And who, I think what is happening right now has gone beyond. Yes, NSAS protest was just a gateway to so many other issues. What we have right now is not even the protest anymore. Our protesters are no longer on the streets. What we're having right now is uh, people going into houses, breaking into houses, burning cars, carting away goods, uh, going like what happened in Kaduna, Navdak office. People went into Navdak uh, office, you know, carted away uh, drugs, illicit, hard drugs worth millions of naira. Now, it is not even about the wealth. According to Navdak, they actually wanted to destroy uh, the, the drugs. You can imagine the effects, because I, I, I bet that some people will not sell these drugs, but they will use them. So just imagine the effects of, of, of that on, on the nation. All these things are fallout of uh, the, the protest that was poorly organized. There is no, like, uh, take the, the uh, for instance, what so happened in Lagos. So you think what is going on now is, uh, as a result of the protest, it you was, are linking... It, in fact, it was not as a result of the, uh, the, the protest. It was the end result that the protest uh, uh, meant to achieve. How would you explain that uh, after a protest of NSAS, the governor took your demand to the presidency, the presidency considered to some of your demand, uh, process or machineries have been put in place. And before you could explain what is happening, you started burning houses, government institutions, going after traditional institutions. What has, for instance, the, 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 the palace of the Oba got to do? And uh, when uh, Babajide was explaining on his Facebook that even the people that came to burn uh, the, 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 the TV station cannot even speak Yoruba. So to me, it's an agenda that was orchestrated by, from, uh, from outside to destroy uh, Southwest, because today Southwest became one of the uh, scenarios of all eyes because of the prosperity in terms of commerce and, and industry. They are prospering and some people outside that region are trying to set it ablaze. And so this thing you, also so happened also in Kano. So buy into the conspiracy. sentiment that, uh, or conspiracy rather, that, uh, you know, uh, some people 
outside the southwest you do not believe that it was just uh, part of the protest yeah or you see it's, of the protest. yeah it's not actually a, 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 a conspiracy because there was a call by inam dekano for instance who allegedly. was you know allegedly, i don't i have the video it was a video record clips it's what it went viral and it was after the release of that that we begin to see the mayhem that was visited on lagos and similar thing almost happened in kano but because in the north we decided by on our own that the protest that we organized must be done within the confines of the law and we also appoint leaders who are going to ensure and be held responsible in the event of any breakdown of law and order so what, what once they started what they did in lagos we, kick, we, we, we quickly restrain our boys because we know what they are aiming at. They want to set Kano ablaze because it's a commercial center of northern Nigeria and bring us more horror and, uh, and, and, and setback. And of course, we, 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 we overcome it. And that is what we expected the Lagos protest to, to do. As, as a protestant, you should have a leader who should be able to conduct your affairs in a very responsible and reasonable and within the ambit of the law and now, this is what was not done in Lagos. and the fallout is what as, we are seeing today all right don't you think that what is going on right now is as a result of hunger like i mentioned at the beginning of the program we are just coming out of are we even out yet i'm not sure we're out of the woods of uh, uh covid 19 a lot of businesses relapse and and you know some people actually some people lost their jobs so we're coming out of a terrible situation and there is hunger. I wouldn't want to link what is going on with the protest. I think what is actually happening now is people are hungry and, you know, they're broke. No money, no food, no job. And we have warehouses where palliatives meant for distribution were kept. I am not supporting that they did that, but... I think, you know, hunger Control. is the main reason why uh, people are breaking into warehouses and, and, and malls, even though it's wrong anyway. If you remember from the opening, the beginning of this program, I concur, and I even strongly attributed to the fact that uh, what is fueling this protest today is the despondency, the hunger, the unemployment, the hopelessness, and even... Uh, people, 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 people are now ready to do anything in order to survive. And then I also told you that the government uh, policies also attributed greatly to the to the to flaming the fire of what is happening today. There's no reason when people have been in lockdown for about a year now, when people have lost job when the security situation is degenerating and then you just come and increase fuel you increase the uh, uh, electric, uh, electricity uh, tariff right. and then the border are still closed and you expect people in spite of this hunger with the high price of an uh, essential commodity not to react it's not possible so i think the government policy and what they did in recent time contributed greatly and then that is what even provided the ground for the protest to even succeed in the first place and degenerated and today is also taking uh, its, man its, its mental forcing into a very dangerous uh, level that if care is not taken what we are fearing which is going to be the ultimate chaos or, 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 or anarchy will, will, will set in because if you see this is a semi anarchy anarchy because people uh, there's no law and order people will just wake up yeah so so, so rather so people will wake up in the morning there will somebody will tell will tell them that there is a motorcycle and so 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 and so senator's house and they will break into the house they will loot everything and on top of it they will set the house on I fire please, yeah so and then this happened in the and like what happened in in, in, in in cross river so, no in aquaibo for instance no in aquaibo for instance yeah. you see they even went to the extent of burning hospital how can you explain this thing? what could be the rationale behind is this irrationality so of so 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 you see the situation is very dicey and then we are expecting to have government that will be proactive 
that will listen, that will, that, that, that will be organized and respond if, uh, efficiently and effectively to arresting this situation. But what are we having, having to do? No, no strategic communication to, to, to Nigeria. Whenever they spoke or they addressed the country, and they, when, when we expect to be inspired or to be giving hope, we become more hopeless to the extent that we don't even want to hear anything from, from them today. So no hope. No, it's nobody to inspire you. Nobody to comfort you. And there is no solution to the problem. Things get degenerated. Some of the people have said that um, parents should actually, uh, they have more work to do on their wards. Do you think that uh, part of the pro problems we're having today uh, is as a result of um, poor management, home management by uh, most parents today? If, for instance, a father who has four or five children and he has been laid out of uh, his job, they cannot pay for their school. He can even hardly bring food to the table. What influence do you think that such father will have over his children? So he cannot even control them. So the economic condition of the country is not conducive. So until it's, pro, it's, 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 it's organized in such a way that the least of us can be taken care of, then the best of us and the highly rich of us cannot see, can also not see peace. So this is what they have failed to understand. So they have to ensure that the interest of the masses, which is uh, this essential uh, uh, commodity, uh, or what they call basic necessity of life, are met, nobody will have peace. And you can also not control your children when you cannot provide those uh, uh, essential uh, necessity of life. And then uh, this is, and when you go to the community today, greater majority of the people cannot do this. For instance, if you go, to the, the, because of the banditry, especially in the northern Nigeria, many communities, many villages have been sacked. So they are roaming around in cities. The father is, is somewhere, the mother is somewhere, the son is somewhere. So they are not even in the same place, not to even begin to look at the welfare and the training and moral of bringing of the child. So, and this, this thing is happening, and uh, no, nothing is being done about it, and it's growing. And uh, we just sit here and discuss. I think that by discussing, something will just happen uh, miraculously, and the problem will be solved. No problem can ever be solved miraculously, except there is conscious and uh, deliberate uh, effort by, at, at the leadership level to bring an end to it. And this is what we are calling for that the government must sit up, must be responsive at all levels. For instance, if you go to local government, there is no government at that level. So it's just a department of the state. So they cannot even carry out the responsibility enshrined by the constitution that is expected of local government, for instance, too. And there is also no democracy in that level of government. So you see, a governor will come, he will stay for maybe eight years, they will conduct elections only for one term, four years, and the, so, I mean two years, and the remaining years, they will just appoint their uh, cronies, their uh, bootlickers to continue to use them as a credit path to loot public treasury. And that is why today, when you go to rural area, the infrastructure are not there. The schools are, the school are not being properly, you know, the structure are not there. The schools the, uh, cannot, are not functioning, the hospital are not functioning, and not to even talk of security, or even the farming uh, occupation that predominantly rural people are engaging. No insecticide, no fertilizer, nothing. All right, and then finally, before we uh, go this evening, before we leave the show, some people, you know, uh, considering what is unfolding, some people have actually said that this seems to be like a wake-up call for the youth. What do you think? Do you think that the youth are beginning to uh, wake up, even though not in the way they should, but do you think that Nigerian youth are beginning uh, to wake up to their responsibilities? No, I think uh, one thing you must take, you must not, uh, you must give to Nigeria youth, is that we have been very obedient, we have been very uh, uh, um, complying with a uh, rule we are we are a kind of conformist so we don't want to go outside the 
law in doing anything. And then deliberately, you can see the, 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 the elders. Because if you take, for instance, in the northern Nigeria, during the 2015 elections, most of the activities, most of, most of the mobilization, and even the vote, and the success of the present government was, uh, was the effort of the young people without a dime. Nobody gave us anything. But we believe that we need to have a leader who will serve as a role model, who will fix Nigeria and bring back uh, our, our glory so that we can prosper. But to our, 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 our surprise, reverse became the case. And gradually, right, uh, gra gradually, because of this, we are learning and we are doing the needful from time to time. And I will I tell you, thank you uh, very I will much. tell because you that time, it's not going to be have, the same. Uh, love for us to continue with this conversation, but that is about the uh, time we have allotted for this program. Perhaps I'll invite you back to the studios uh, so we can continue with this discussion. Thank you once more for coming. It's my pleasure, and good evening, Nigerians. All right, that has been the program states of the union. Now uh, we'll take. Uh, a break for this week. We'll see you again same time, uh, same station next week. Until then, please be law abiding.